the reason that we invited him to Cora is because he's also, as part of that work, he's been very involved with local communities, local residents, being able, being facilitated to be able to speak and work with their kind of local government and to kind of work together and see each other's roles and see how they can kind of uh, grow democracy in a quite a difficult situation. Um, we've decided, and many of you will have been watching the news and be aware of um, some things that have been happening in Zimbabwe. So we will be um, having uh, the formal presentation begin in a few minutes, um, but there'll be uh, uh, a few minutes of, uh, of an introduction by Chikora um, that will be not part of the formal presentation. If you see what I mean. So I'll ask Chikora to come up and just say a little bit about um, Zimbabwe. So, so if I can just now formally welcome you to begin your presentation. 
find out what's going to happen to all the creatures, all the trees, all the birds, all the animals. The focus of my presentation today is to share with you how we have experienced and how we have tried to promote democracy and participation in the Haiti. Caritas is not so much interested in changing politics or to be confrontational, but rather to build peaceful processes that save lives and reduce human suffering. We do this by promoting collective concerted efforts, participation, collaboration, involvement of the affected people, all stakeholders concerned, neighbors and friends like you. May I just know how many of you have ever been to Zimbabwe? Okay, quite a number. How about Africa? Many of you. <laughs> That's good. So, Zimbabwe is in Africa, in the southern part, south of the equator. And it's a decentralized uh, government system that is dual. We have the traditional and we have the urban laws and it's divided into eight provinces, like you, know, you can see. It has two major cities um, and then each province has a provincial capital. You can see from the demarcations, those in bold, those are the provinces in Zimbabwe. So it's subdivided into 59 districts. 1,200 words and sometimes referred to as municipalities. So each district is headed by a district administrator appointed by the public service, that is the government. And there's also a rural district council which appoints a chief executive officer. So the rural district council is the one that comprises of the elected councillors, the district administrator and one representative from the chiefs. These are the traditional leaders who have the custom and the law. So the government functions at district level are carried out by district offices of national government departments like Department of Health, Department of Livestock, Department of Works, and also Environment. So our constitution in Zimbabwe also points out to democracy. It says democratic participation in government by all citizens and communities in Zimbabwe. So we are talking about the equitable allocation of national resources and the participation of local communities in the determination of development priorities within their area. So probably just to get a definition <coughs> of democracy from the way we see it. This is a central determinant of the quality of life and a central element in the ability of men and women to live freely and autonomously as human beings. This is a definition that also people can contest. And this is quite familiar for those of you who come from this parts of the world. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. So this is the American Declaration of Independence. It's something that is always there. It speaks out to democracy. And also famous Magna Carta. Know that before God, for the health of our soul and those of our ancestors, and heirs to the throne of God, the exaltation of the Holy Church, and the better order of our kingdom. So, from all this, we get to see that it's speaking to one thing which we had yesterday. I think in the Bible it 
say gives to Caesar or belongs to Caesar and to God or belongs to God. So for us, we mainly focus on that common good, which is again made in democracy. So the Pope would also like to say that not everyone is called to engage directly in political life. Society is also enriched by countless array of organizations which work to promote the common good, <coughs> to defend the environment, whether natural or ever. So this is how we have been tackling democracy indirectly by not involving <coughs> ourselves in politics, but addressing the needs that have been on the ground. So what are the challenges that we have in Zimbabwe? We have children that have no access to proper infrastructure, education infrastructure, no access to water and sanitation. Some communities have no access to water and sanitation. These are just like some of the problems that we have. According to the report that was produced by UNICEF, they are saying that it is estimated that 46% of Zimbabwe have access to improved water. So you can calculate backwards how many do not have access. So 46 have access. And only 30% have improved sanitation facilities. We are talking about the basic the toilet. 30% So we are looking at the overall water supply uh, sanitation in urban areas being estimated at 60%. That is not in the urban areas. So what has that resulted in? This has resulted <coughs> in diseases like typhoid, like cholera, that have also resulted in people dying. As of 2015 alone, Health department recorded <coughs> deaths that were caused by cholera. We had 12,724 diarrhea cases that were recorded as of 2015, and 143 people died. Uh, and of these figures, 6,205 cases that were reported of diarrhea, and 41 of deaths were children. So we have the idea of being a major issue that affects children and one of the five key diseases. We have children being burdened with this access to water, a basic right, a basic human fundamental right. They have to wake up early in the morning <coughs> to fetch water. Either they do this in the morning or they do this after school. So it means their time is lost, time to be children, time to play, <coughs> time to do their homework, and the times they lose lessons. Because of HIV and AIDS and the life expectancy, which is at 50 years for women and 47 for men, you have children being left They cannot walk the long distances to the water. So it means the children have to face the burden. We are also talking about basic issues like environmental protection, service delivery, the throwaway culture, which is the behavior that is in us, in humans. How do you develop democracy in such a community where people are just throwing data everywhere, where council cannot provide services to actually come and collect the refuse? We have households that are not connected to sewer systems. Communities do not do waste recycling, they do not do proper waste management. <coughs> we have communities that are banning waste as a way of disposing waste, thereby affecting <coughs> the climate, further resulting in climate change. So communities have limited options in terms of.
try to organize communities to be responsible for their own environment by creating an enabling environment for engagement. We use innovative methods. Communities can organize a cleanup campaign. This will touch everyone in the society, the business people, the government, so that by coming together to clean their own environment, already they have a platform for discussion. They have platforms to address some of the which is some of the issues that are affecting <coughs> We also try to improve skills in 
terms of building the capacity of especially our, our vulnerable groups who are the women. I think you are aware that in most African countries and in Zimbabwe, women have the greatest burden. They have to fetch the firewood, they have to fetch the water, they have to do the cleaning, the cooking, and also at times they have to find the food. And people would ask, they are the men. Because of this um, society that we are, where 80% of the population are unemployed, it means men are not able to actually provide for their own family. So what are they doing? They try to escape that reality. Well, can they do the farming? It's hard for them. Because of climate change, they're having changes in the weather pattern. We used to have six months of rainfall and now that is reduced to close to two months. So it means <coughs> agriculture in itself is failing in Zimbabwe because of climate change. Right now we're talking about droughts that was induced by El Nino. We are talking about four million people that are in need of food at the moment. So we try to help communities to harness local resources like water from the rivers and we're doing this with the support that